What's up everyone, it's Tank from Energy, and we are talking hard. It's actually getting my heart going a little bit, just trying to like think of thinking about opening up here. Um, I've been MIA on my YouTube channel, but that's not like, I haven't always been consistent in the past, but I've noticed that I've been missing uh, for like eight or nine months or something like that since my last upload. I think there was like a random uh, upload of Chloe's cat box or something like that. But um, other than that, I've been, yeah, I don't know how else to finish that sentence without launching into what this video is about. I checked myself into a partial inpatient program at my local hospital and they diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder and complex PTSD. I knew that I had PTSD and the, the complex part just basically meant that it was from childhood as, as well as just throughout my life. But I had no idea. I was, t that hit me like a ton of bricks in the face when, when they were like, have you ever heard of borderline personality disorder? My face was just like, Oh my God, it all locked in and I knew, I, I mean, I went through a thorough psychiatric evaluation. Yeah, they determined that and I then went through dialectical behavioral therapy and trauma stuff and all that. Group therapy, it was four weeks. It was about a month that I did this. I know a lot of people tell me that they appreciate when I'm raw and I'm real. So this is real and this is raw. I'm nervous talking about this stuff because it doesn't have anything to do with my music. It has all to do with me. So I was diagnosed with having borderline personality disorder. And that freaked me out really bad because I had no idea that I'd, what was going on in my brain. Being diagnosed with this, at 35 was pretty intense because I'd gone my whole adult life so far thinking that this is the way you're supposed to react to situations and these are the, this is the way you're supposed to interact with people and it seems so obvious in hindsight now but I did you know I just didn't have a name for the disorder and it really yeah it made me it made a lot of sense the diagnosis. I wish I had known a little sooner that I had this and but I don't know if I would have had the mental maturity even when I was younger. I don't I think this was the right time for me to find this, this out about myself because I'm able to control my emotions a lot better and I don't I, I believe that to be true based on my own account of my own actions and everybody else around me and people I communicate with and talk to. Friends, I guess, you know, they say that it looks like I'm doing better. It seems like I'm doing better. This probably seems like I'm doing worse because I'm all shaky and like anxiety ridden and I'm opening up about a mental illness with a very intense stigma attached to it. Google some of that, like, you know, are people with BPD, whatever, or can someone with BPD, and then just like look at the first things that pop up if they're like really depressing. <sighs> okay, I'm just, sorry. I mean, I have all the faith in the world that I'll cut this up correctly. I just, I'm nervous. I'm legitimately nervous about talking about this stuff. For those that don't know what borderline personality disorder is, according to nimh.nih.gov, that's National Institute of Mental Health. I'll give you an overview and then the, re the link will be in the description if you wanna read about more like signs and symptoms and all that. But the overview is borderline personality disorder is an illness marked by ongoing pattern of varying moods, self-image and behavior. These symptoms often result in impulsive actions and problems in relationships. People with borderline personality disorder may experience intense episodes of anger, depression, and anxiety that can last 
from a few hours to days. Um, yeah, and even just reading that just made me, oh God, that gave me a lot of anxiety. Just it's like, oh Jesus, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you want to read more about that, that link is in the description below, but that's the definition. I, I found it to be kind of funny that they, if you look it up on Wikipedia, uh, they say that certain characters in movies were based off of people or that that having BPD, borderline personality disorder. And uh, one was Darth Vader, which was horrifying. But one that would make a lot more sense to me that was actually pretty funny and actually kind of frightening was the cable guy. Jim Carrey in the cable guy has borderline personality disorder. Oh, don't do this. You just need help. We all get lonely. Yeah, but I get really lonely. I mean, look at me, come on! Loosely, he's supposed to, according to Wikipedia, I don't know how legitimate that is, but it makes a lot of sense that if you've ever seen that movie. And I have always said that's my favorite Jim Carrey movie and one of my favorite movies, and I really identify with that character. I feel like I'm a musical version of that character. When I read that, it was just like, this was this was like an omen, like a sign or something. I was just like, oh my God, I, I have this for sure. Definitely, definitely. Not, no, not, not, that wasn't my real validation. The real validation was when somebody with a PhD or a whatever, you know, letters by their name and plaques behind their heads told it to me. So trust those people. Don't just diagnose yourself because that's idiotic. What made me check myself into the partial inpatient program at my hospital or at the hospital was um, just my anger, my rage, my uncontrollable, just, it's called splitting, which I guess I'd have to look that definition up too. There's a lot of like definition type stuff, but it's like once you understand what it is, you know what splitting is and you can identify when you're splitting, but I couldn't exactly repeat a definition, textbook definition to you. Luckily I have an iPad right here. Splitting is the failure in a person's thinking to bring together the dichotomy of both positive and negative qualities of the self and others into a cohesive, realistic whole. It is a common defense mechanism. The individuals tend to think in extremes for an example, individuals' actions and motivations are all good or all bad with no middle ground. That's also known as black and white thinking, which is absolutely something I do. If somebody says anything remotely like off in the wrong tone with the wrong cadence to their delivery, if I feel, if I even start to imagine what their intent might have been, behind emotion or a, or a look they gave me or even a word you know just a word they said to me i will start splitting and i'm i just my that person sucks they're a bad person they suck now they they need to be written off out of my life gone forever it's just you're done instant rageful black and white you are done i'm just done with that person in my mind in that moment i really never want to see that human being ever again truthfully and that's where i had like because i have borderline personality disorder i can't i have i have it's not that i can't i have a hard time bringing that basic basically spiral of insanity <laughs> in, in, back down to the ground and and assess it from a realistic viewpoint as to what might be going on and meet somewhere in the middle yeah, I really struggle with that. I'm paranoid beyond whatever they say. I always think everybody is laughing at me and or talking about me in a threatening way. Like they're following me or they're, they recognize me. And, and it's not that I think that I am like, gonna be recognized everywhere I go or anything like that. It's just, I, I have been recognized in public like many times, even just recently. And I don't know anybody's intentions. Everybody's wearing, everybody's wearing masks now. It's 
freaky. Like, I don't know, when I used to hang out with people, they would wear masks and they would do crazy shit. <laughs> crazy violent shit. I mean, that in, in and of itself, just going to the grocery store can, if I'm not in the right state of mind, which I try to be, I try to be. <sighs> I'm getting serious anxiety talking about this. Can you tell? Can, can you tell? Let me know in the comments if you can tell I'm anxious. Anyway. I'm looking at my notepad here. I wrote a notepad to actually prepare for a video so that it would actually it would come across well. So hopefully. Hopefully. And also when I start splitting on somebody, it gets immeasurably worse when they aren't understanding or at least positively receptive or can just shield me or like just ignore me I guess there's a lot of guilt that comes with splitting on people I wanted to talk about that because I say some of the meanest most blunt ugly like darkest area of your mind type of things that you do not ever want to say to the people that you care about. Those are the exact things that I say when I am splitting and I'm going into this all or nothing, like black and white thinking mode. Once I come down from splitting or, you know, whatever they call it when you stop splitting, I feel I feel the level of guilt that I would have felt had I done it of sound mind. So it's like, I don't even know who the person was that just freaked out on my dad and my mom and my brother or whoever, just, or, or my girlfriend or and just everybody, everybody, <laughs> my friends. I just feel this immense guilt now after I come down from it. To me, there's no worse person on earth than me because of what I just did. And I constantly feel like I need to redeem myself for having to, just having said certain things in certain situations where it's just like, oh, wouldn't that be the ultimate thing? Their Achilles heel of perfectly constructed words. I'll just dagger through the heart with that one. It's like you just go for that with the anger and rage that I, that I get. And it's, I'm doing a lot better with it now that I went through dialectical behavioral therapy for four weeks. I'm able to control it a lot more. There still were times where I had serious breakdowns since. It's not something that can be cured. It's not something that just goes away. It's not something that you can take a specific medication for. It's not treatable like that. It's treatable through cognitive behavioral therapy, basically, like that, it, like, which is basically DBT. Also, the smallest thing can send me sp splitting, I guess, send me splitting. I'm probably gonna say that a lot. That sent me splitting, especially any type of obvious things like uh, confrontation or anything like that. I'm, I'm going to be sent into a spiral of insanity in my head. But even tiny things like I get to the store and there's a miscalculation and I need to like put one protein bar back. Some type of misfire will set me off co off the course of my plan and i'm now totally i have split now like it just that quickly i'm now in i don't i can't handle my finances what's happening like i, and I just am immediately in just my brain's just darting around in a thousand different directions you gotta really reel yourself in when that happens i don't know when i'm splitting that's basically is when i ask myself why am I feeling scared? Why am I feeling angry? Any type of negative emotion, once I find myself in it, if I can identify 
if I can stand next to myself, like beside myself essentially, or for, for, for a moment, if I could stand next to myself and just think, what is making me afraid? What is, what is causing this? Is it something legitimate and tangible? It could be my way that I'm perceiving it. 99% of the time, it's just the way I'm perceiving it. There's another thing that it's, to me, it's always felt just like, oh, boo-hoo, pity party kind of thing because of the people I grew up around, I guess. It's just self-value. I'm constantly devaluing myself. It definitely affects me as an artist because even the slightest thing can just set me, uh, set me down a path of just, well, I, then I'm done. I'm on suck. I'm gonna quit. Energy's done. I, the, amount of, the amount of times energy has <laughs> almost disappeared in my own mind. Uh, just being like, why don't I just give up? Like, you, you know, is, and then I go from that to, you know, fuck this. This is me. This is my identity. I'm taking it full full on like I go from one polar thing to the other on the slightest little thing so it's a little giveaway just piss me off in the comments and you'll fuck up my life also being in a band with others has been I, I suppose objectively unfair to them being in a band and traveling in a van with others. And I'm talking like 10 plus years ago. When I was way younger and way more out of control with my emotions, for sure, I was splitting on stage and freaking out at the audiences and in some cases, punching the audience in the face. They always say in band documentaries and all these interviews that having Oh, it's like being in a marriage, or like being in with bandmates and stuff like that, or it's like a relationship. I have borderline personality disorder. I have had more bandmates than Axl Rose. It's obviously something about me and the way I deal with people and get along with people and interact with people, just interpersonal relationships. I have a serious issue with them. I hate people. I also love people. I don't know how to explain that. Borderline comes with a fear of abandonment, uh, which I'll discuss another time, I guess. Pushing everyone away leading to isolation, which I always do. I've always been like that. Think that everybody is bad and that they're... I'm still not sure about that one, honestly because I'm pretty sure most of the people that I've pushed away are pretty bad. So maybe that's me still having black and white thinking and problems. I don't think they're entirely bad people. I just think they're bad for me. I don't, know, I don't really know if I have a problem with being isolated. This quarantine hasn't affected me personally on a level where I don't get to go do stuff anymore. I don't do stuff. I, I, I like to just stay inside because what I just said, I push everybody away. I, I haven't seen a lot of people in years and it's because of just that, this, this whole thing. How I control this? On a daily basis, day to day, minute to minute, hour to hour, second to second, I don't know. <laughs> as, I, as I'm sitting here trying to do this video and stay calm, somebody, somebody walked by that I, I had a, a disagreement with verbally, kind of berated this person and they just walked by my window. Now I'm thinking of when I was splitting on that guy. Yeah, just even just right now, just while filming this thing, someone who I have flipped the fuck out on 
lost my shit for no reason. No reason. No real reason. No reason. I got in a car. This person was in the back seat. And I lost my shit and started berating this person like they were subhuman to their face and in their face. And there was no reason for me to do that. That was also about two years ago, maybe probably a year and a half ago at this point. And I've like walked by this person and it seems fine. I just, that's just what I mean. I, it's, this is how bad my problem was getting. So I needed to check myself in somewhere. It's getting to the point where everywhere I go, I'm starting to just see people who I've had flip outs with or at or around. When I just say flip outs, meaning like I was splitting basically. Yeah, like I said, I still have trouble. I was crying behind Stop and Shop like a psychopath, sending videos of it to my mother, just saying, please help me, why is this happening to me? Just because I was like negative in the bank and I just like was freaking out, having a complete episode over it. And it turns out I just, I just called my bank and they reversed the fee, everything was fine. Like I didn't need to freak out like that. But I, it was the end of the world in my mind. I was, I was like, why can't I handle my finances? And I just lost it in the parking lot. That was just a recent example, like a couple weeks ago. But for the most part, what I, I, I really do, ha believe it or not, that sounds really extreme because it is. That's, having BPD is really fucking extreme. It's all it is. <laughs> it's just extreme. What I do minute to minute, moment to moment, is I try staying grounded, which is basically a reality check. And I try to figure out what's really going on around me. What could I be being paranoid or scared of that's making me feel so reactive in a situation that doesn't call for it? Basically, think before you speak, think before you act, think before you do anything. Just stop and think. Boston Hardcore. Stop and think. It's a good band. They really are. I sold my both demos. 12 inch. Oh! That's the biggest vinyl regret sale I've ever made. It was, I sold it for 20 bucks on eBay. Oh, I'm such a moron. Anyway, stop and think. You gotta stop and think. Do these people know who you are? Are they following you? Are they doing, you know, are they talking about you? Could this all be in your head? Could this be a mood I'm in and nothing's actually wrong? It's just the wild mood shifts and mood swings. It's a, it's a mood disorder, essentially. A lot of what triggers splitting has to do with PTSD. They're very intertwined, which I have CPTSD. Knowing your triggers is also very helpful. If you're aware of your triggers, you can at least say to yourself, well, that just happened. And I know for a fact that that's one of my triggers. So how high my emotions are running right now makes sense. I just need to regulate it and stay in control instead of just reacting and, and freaking out and getting completely in a chaotic headspace. It's just all about staying grounded. It's what I've learned in the program that I went through at least. There are some positive aspects to having borderline in the sense that you feel everything really intensely. Like everything is very, very intense. My love for music is so intense that I've, I'm twitching right now because I know I'm about to say something weird and I have uh, neurological, I have neurological tics. I've had them since I was a kid. I'm so intense with music and just my love for music, not even with energy, not even just with energy, energy's nothing. It's just music. Energy's not nothing. But music, in general, I'm so fixated on it that when I'm, <laughs> when I'm feeling it, like when I'm truly in the zone and I'm experiencing music the way I like to experience it, it is, I mean, I'm just thinking about, <laughs> I'm just thinking about that recent, Joe Rogan, Mike Tyson interview where he said that knocking a dude out you know, gives him or orgasmic levels of pleasure. I feel joy really deeply 
when I feel it. I feel immense warmth and happiness, and I feel very, very loved and cared for when I'm feeling that way. I feel super intense, like I want to cry over how just happy and grateful I am of the smallest little things, and I'll, I'll go from, from that to like my intense love for music. The intensity behind my creativity is fueled by me having borderline and I'm grateful for that. Ever since this diagnosis, a lot of people have been saying to me and I've been reading it that a commonality or like, or it's found very often that people with borderline personality disorder are are significantly artistically inclined. That is obviously, I don't know how to say things about myself. I can't compliment myself. I hate it. I hate it. I can't even acknowledge that I have an, a, like a talent. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up now because it's probably going to be really long. But I just want to do invite you into my mind. Into what I've been up to the last few months, figuring out my brain, trying to at least. Thank you for watching this and listening to me talk about my own mental health issues. I know that it can be long-winded and boring and you don't even want to hear about it. I mean, some people I've, a lot of people I've met have had that attitude at least, but it's really reassuring when the few times that I've opened up to the public about my mental health issues, it's been really reassuring having just all the positive comments and, and support that everybody leaves me. And I am really thankful for that because just putting out these videos it feels like I'm going somewhere. It feels like I'm getting somewhere and doing something. And when people react to it and I get your feedback and it's doing what I want it to do, it feels like I'm doing what I need to be doing. It's, this is basically my, this is my antidote for my borderline is my creativity. If I stay focused on it, whether it's my videos, whether it's my music, anything. If I stay focused and I keep doing things, I can stave off the infection. Sorry. I guess I had to ruin it. Yeah, so for now, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm done talking. I'm not going to say it yet. I want you to listen to my band. I am so convinced to get all of you listening to my band. Follow me everywhere at Tank From Energy. This is just one word, Tank From Energy. Like it's a sentence. Please hit subscribe. Please click like, comment below, even if you want to insult me. I don't give a shit. Fuck you. I don't care. Treat me like a clown. Throw, shoot me off the thing into the water bucket. I am your pinata. So until next time, listen to energy and talk hard.